Hello people, I'm Data from JGX and uh, here we are with another Mech Club video. Today we are reviewing the Inner Sphere Rifleman because it got recently quirked and I think that at least some of the variants became very interesting. Hitboxes, uh, the Mac has pretty large side torsos so we could say that it's not that Excel friendly uh, also, the problem is that this big part above the head registers in the CT. So when you try to peek, your cockpit is in the middle. So when you put your face on a wall, uh, maybe for you it looks like that you are in cover, but this part above is popping out. And you get shot on that and register damage in the CT. This means that when you are approaching the place that you want to, use as a cover to peek from instead of hiding at the very edge of the rock of the wall of the whatever you should hide a little bit in the back more in the back because you should account the fact that if you stay too close to the edge this part will pop out anyways that's a general a general rule in um, in the in the peaking fights because you know, even the, the hitboxes, the meshes of the terrain at long range are quite more simple. So if you stay close to the edge that you want to use to peek from, uh, most likely the enemy that is going to see you through the terrain. So a general rule when you're peeking is don't wait at the edge of your cover, but wait a little bit in the back and then move out, shoot and move in. As for the agility, you can go in the store, heavy rifleman. The agility is high for a 60 tonner. Sorry, for a heavy mech, but not for a 60 tonner. Uh, the dragon should have more, and in fact, the dragon has more. The champion should have more as well. But the agility of the rifleman overall it's pretty decent. The turn rate I'd say it's pretty low for a 60 toner. It's not exceptional in terms of agility, but overall the mech is playable. It doesn't have issues with uh, agility. So are all of these variants good? Mm, we're gonna see, but at least a couple of them are uh, Meta. I'd say that they are meta. Uh, they are must-have in everyone's inventory. Uh, I want to start from the 8D, 3 PVCs. The Mac is uh, very, very strong. A strong pop dot. PPC heat gen, generic cooldown, generic range, generic velocity. Racks, yes, you can make a rack Mac out of it if you want. Jump jet heat, that's very important if you want to jump. But when I read jump jet heat, jump jet burn time, jump jet quirks, you need to use it as a jump jet mech. Uh, and as a jump jet mech, you want PPCs, not racks. Racks are usually good to farm noobs in tier 4, tier 5, tier 3. But in the upper tiers, you shouldn't use racks. Uh, so three PPCs, jump jets, and pop tart. This is an excellent farming mech is one of the best farming mechs in the game right now uh why excel if i said that this is not really excel friendly the exposure time is very little because you're pop tarting and uh, if i had to remove the excel i would have to go too slow i'm, I'm going a lot slower and I lost also a heatsink. This invalidates you more than uh, the Excel. Another one that is pretty meta is the 5D. Because it comes with 8 lasers. Uh, yes, it has some PPC quirks. But what we need is 10 range. Laser heat gen 5. Medium laser range 10. And usual rifleman survival. You know, yes, it is not Excel friendly, but it has a lot of survival. So it kind of gets away with this. Uh, six year meds, two large lasers. This time we can afford an LFE. Uh, I, uh, the alternative is an Excel 290, 
with an extra heatsink in the CT, but the trade-off is not that bad as in the other case. So in this case, you can afford an LFE. Uh, 20 double heat sinks T comp 1 and you're good to go. This is a good laser vomit mech. It vertically peaks. Then um, another decent one, uh, the DB. The DB uh, has cooldown, heat, range and most important, heat dissipation, most importantly laser HSL. Since large lasers are for no ghosts, the regular variants, not the ass. You can five, five, you can fire five large lasers without ghost. Good amount of heat sinks. We cannot take an LFE. We already have endo steel. If we had to take the LFE, we would have to go too slow. So we are good this way. Five large lasers. You could try four large pulse, but. Some people actually run it with four large poles. Uh, they are mistaking. You can try to put four large poles, but the mech, the combo is too heavy. Like you need to give up too many double heat sinks for that to work. And also you're giving up range. So in this case, I'd go five regular large lasers, not ERs, of course, because you cannot alpha strike them. This is again, a very strong mech. Then we have the 3N, another good, they're all good, it's just that the PPC one and the laser vomit one are 100% meta. The DB is actually pretty good and the others are good as well, but the, the three PPC one, the laser vomit and the DB are, I'd say, the meta ones. Uh, 3N, it's centered on that UAC, jam chance, ballistic cooldown, ballistic velocity, uh, works, so I'd go this way, two ultra fives and uh, six medium lasers, this is a fast harasser, since the quirks on the UX are pretty thick, you could try to put only two ultra tens in it, and that's it, you would have to just to stop with two ultra tens, I don't know how good this would be, because we're running short on double heat sinks. I think they're though both valid uh, setups. Then we have the 3C, mix of ballistics and lasers. You can try a four AC2s with the backup small lasers in case you end up into a brawl. Most of the games are brawl games right now, so it makes sense to have these sort of uh, backup weapons. And then the hero one, the LK, it has massive quirks on LBXs, so you can set it up with two LB2s and two LB5s. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. If so, remember to subscribe to my channel, hit like, share the content with your friends, and I'll catch you guys next time.